Greetings, programs. Per Pianissimo here, and welcome back to Vintage Story. Today we're going to go over what I think is important when looking for an initial world seed to start, especially when you're first starting as a new player. This is the world that we started during the world settings video. The first things I want to mention are things that you can see right from spawn. First of all, are we in a stable area? Do you see the gear in the middle of the health bar and the hunger bar and over the hotkey bar? That gear, it looks like it's wiggling a little bit from left to right, but that's basically stable. You want your spawn to be in a fairly stable area and what that means is that gear is not spinning counterclockwise or to the left. For example, you see that rift there? You normally want to avoid these. Oh, there's one over there. There were a bunch when we first created this world. We were surrounded by, I think, eight of them or nine of them. Um, let me show you what happens when you get close to one. Did that one disappear? Now, as I get closer, watch that gear. See how it's spinning to the left? This means that I'm in unstable area, very unstable since it's really shifting to the left. And you can see how the world starts turning red. That's called the rust world. The more that you shift toward the rust world and the more that your gear spins to the left, you can see how the little teal marks it's actually dropping that's like an up and down gauge it fills up when you're at 100 percent and then it slowly drops or speedily drops in some areas that is the fantasy part of this world normally when you get near to those rifts that's when the drifters or the bad guys in the game spawn we are starting in a world that we have 10 days before the drifters or the monsters start to appear. So they're not too dangerous as of yet, <laughs> but we won't want to be getting too very close to them once that 10 days is over. So that is an example of stability and there will be regular areas in the world where your gear will spin to the left and it will slowly drop. This is not some place you want your spawn, nor do you want to build your base in an area of temporal instability. What we want to look for in our spawn area, besides being temporally stable, is reeds. Reeds are what we use to create our initial inventory items. You can see that I can press my inventory. We have a built-in crafting section of our inventory, but we have no slots here, okay? We actually have to make baskets and backpacks to put in here to increase or actually even give us an inventory other than what we can hold in our hands here. The first step to that is reeds. Now you can see the cattails off in the distance. Those are what we're needing, and we will need a stack of them. So make sure in the area, oh goodness, look at all of these. You want to make sure you are starting in an area with plentiful reeds. Another thing you want to look for are plentiful hard stones or flint. Now this is copper, and although important, it's not what we're looking for right now. We are looking for ah, these. Peridotite stones, those are a hard stone. We are on a peridotite area. We will need to find either more peridotite or some flint to make tools out of. It can be hard to find in the grassy areas. Sometimes if you go over to areas that are more sandy or even rocky areas it's easier to find okay now there is flint this is the other thing that we can look for to make tools there's peridotite let's see if i can find another piece of flint all right now with flint and hard stones what you can do is you shift click and you get this dialogue to make a tool 
So I'm going to escape out of that. Now, with these stones, you can get different varieties of stones. Some of them are hard stones, some of them are softer stones, like sandstone and the sedimentary stones. So what we want to do is to check, we will shift click on the ground to put the stone down. Now you can put all your stones down like this, but if you shift click again on this with the same type of rock, now you see how the tool dialog has popped up. This means that we can use these stones for tools. So this is a good area because we have plenty of objects to make tools out of. Hello, baby man. The third thing we want to look for are sticks. We use the sticks to finish creating our tools. You will usually find those, and that's another thing we need to look for, nearby trees. You don't want them too far away. Now by the trees, you can normally find sticks, and I am not finding sticks. Any sticks? As an alternative, you can find these bushy areas and these say maple leaves and you can bust the leaves and sometimes you'll get sticks. What you're really looking for is something called branchy leaves. You see how it says maple branchy leaves? If you punch that, it will drop a stick. And you can go for leaves. It's so much easier to just find sticks on the ground that it's not a deal breaker. We'd also, of course, like nearby trees, not only for sticks, but because we need wood, but we'd like them nearby a plains area. And we are in an area that's you know, fairly devoid of trees because trees are where wolves spawn. And wolves don't count as monsters, but the wolves and bears still want to eat you. All right, so they can spawn before your 10 day grace period is up but not too far. We do want trees to access for wood and sticks. Another benefit of having a plains area is it's easier to locate crops. This is where you will get vegetables and seeds from breaking the crop out. Of course, the less developed the crop is, the less chance you have of getting a seed. The next thing we want to look for is easy food. You can see the berry bushes. You can collect berries off of them when they are ripe. You just right click and there we are, some berries. Here are some more berries of a different type. This is easy access to early food in the game as are mushrooms. All you have to do is beat on them a bit and you can gather them up. These always stay a spawn spot for that particular mushroom and make sure to check that you are able to eat them because many mushrooms are poisonous. Another thing you want to look for in your initial starting area are ruins. You can see some here, really near to where we spawned. These are useful for not only building materials, you can break this cobblestone with your hands, but they are also useful because sometimes they hide goodies. There we are. This is a cracked vessel that has food in it. We can break it. And look, we have some spelt grain. So these are very nice to have around in your beginning area. I like them to actually build my first house out of, either with the materials or even right into them. Sometimes you can find larger ruins. Another thing you want to look for is a trader nearby your starting area. And that's what they look like on the map. And let's go talk about why. Here we are at the trader's wagon. And as you can see, he's got a little bit of a door here and he has a bed. Yes, you can sleep in the bed and you cannot destroy any of his items or pick any of them up. It will tell you no, it's claimed by the trader. However, you can use 
his baskets and chests. You can put things in here because let me tell you, initial starting inventory is very hard to manage. So it's nice to have a trader nearby with a couple of areas to put things in. Many of the times they have things on the back. And here we are, we have two chests. Chests are not easy to make in this game. You must have progressed past the copper age in order to make them. So it is very nice as a newbie to have a little extra area. Plus, if you're still struggling in getting a shelter built, you can come in here and use the bed to either sleep through the night or through a temporal storm. And that's very useful. Clay deposits are also nice to find. Many times you'll find them as slightly discolored areas on the map. This is not a deal breaker because you will find clay as you are exploring your world initially, but it would be something I would consider very important to have in a brand new world. All right, now there's one little drawback to this world and I had to travel quite a ways away from our spawn area to find clay. This is fire clay and you can also find blue clay And here's an example of blue clay. So here's an example of fire clay in the middle of the grassy area. <laughs> Again, very hard to see. And in this type of biome, it's not really showing up very clearly on the map as a discolored area. So the important things to look for in a world seed when you're just starting out is a stable area, plentiful reeds for basket making for inventory, hard stones or plentiful flint for making tools, sticks or lots of bushes for getting sticks, nearby trees but access to a plains area, nearby trader useful for inventory and a bed in a pinch, nearby ruins nice for building materials, possibly making a starter house out of, and finding those cracked vessels for finding useful items to start out with, berries or mushrooms for early starting food, and other positive things are finding clay deposits and possibly copper or a large sandy or gravel area that you can easily see stones and copper deposits on. So now that we've discussed what we're looking for in a good world seed, let me show you an easy way to copy those world settings we spent so much time on in order to find our ideal world seed. This awesome kingdom world is the one we created in the world settings tutorial. And this has all of the settings that I recommend for someone just starting. If you go over here to the little pencil, we'll go into edit mode. Now here is the seed. It's actually a pretty good seed to start. It is 992519952 if you wanted to use that seed. Right now I'm going to show you how, just in case this world was terrible or if we want something a little bit different, we can copy our world settings. So right next to playstyle, it says copies the playstyle to your clipboard. This will copy all of the settings that we created onto the clipboard and then we can go back and we can create a new world and we can go to customize now, I don't see a place that you can actually paste them, but if you control V, you can see that it automatically pastes everything in there. I do not know about a shortcut on the Mac for paste. If there is one, then by all means use that. On PC, it's control V, which is the paste command, and it will paste all of those world settings. So that's easy. Control V, apply, and now we can create this world and see what it's like. Okay, it looks like we have spawned in a forest. Now, a word of warning, forests are traditionally where 
the wolves like to spawn and I am not completely sure about bears but I have a feeling that bears are going to like these foresty areas as well so remember the things that we are looking for when we are starting a world we're looking for access to trees which is good we're looking for access to reeds now we can look on the map here and there are some bodies of water here let's go take a quick look what kind of stones do we have there is flint and basalt i believe basalt is hard enough to make tools with let's take a quick look in order to find out now that i have two pieces of basalt on the ground and if you shift click you'll put one stone down if you shift click again if it gives you this dialogue in order to make tools then yes you have found a hard enough stone to make tools out of so that is a good choice plus we have flint as well we can always make tools out of flint and it is everywhere in the world so there are some berry bushes again that's our fast source of food there are only a few reeds around here I don't see too many and what I recommend when starting is to find a full stack of reeds so so that is a really huge strike against I really like to have that first stack of reeds before nightfall sticks and if not sticks a lot of leaves that you can punch in order to get sticks but let me tell you, when you're first starting, it's much easier just to find sticks on the ground to collect. So in order to have my ideal world, we're also looking for ruins and a trader. And it looks like that may be a trader right down here. Let's go take a look. Again, if I was just starting in a world, I wouldn't actually go investigate the trader. Some of them have more chests than others. I would let that be part of the adventure and experience. I just like knowing that it's nearby, uh, especially for a new player, just because inventory is such an issue. And I said you really don't know what you want to keep until you've played the game a few times. So he's got a little wagon in the back. That's kind of interesting. He's got a basket. There is a barrel in there as well. Quite nice. What has he got inside? Oh, we're going to be difficult nice tree so he has a regular hay bed and another basket so this inside is like the last trader we saw okay as for world two i wouldn't select this world because it does look like there's a nice area that's flat without a lot of trees that has the trader nearby that i could build a little house or even just use the trader for shelter at first I don't like it because I don't see any really good source of ruins nearby. And I really like those, especially early game, because you get some of the free goodies out of the vessels as well as the building materials. And again, I always like to build my house inside one of the ruins. So let's go ahead and take a look at another world. Okay, here we are back in the world selection screen. We're going to create new world. I'm going to go to customize and then control V and then click apply and here we are a brand new world so let's try world number three at first glance this world looks really interesting we have a nearby desert which sometimes it's easier to look for rocks and stones on the desert floor rather than in all of this brush <laughs> we have trees well, not very much, but we at least have leaves to bust out for saplings and sticks. There are some berries and some mushrooms, puffball. Hmm. That looks interesting. Is it edible? It looks like it's an okay plant to eat. We can try that out. We have a trader nearby. We also have some ruins nearby. There are some stands of trees, so they aren't too far away. There are, well, these are a lot of lily pads, but there's usually a bunch of reeds there as well. In fact, we can go take a quick look. Yeah, 
And there is a ruin right next to the trader. That's nice. Along with a free a goodie vessel. Seeds? Not the most important thing to get on your first day, but looky there. Cabbage seeds. These don't spawn wild in the world. It's really nice to be able to find these early on. Here is our trader. We can't use the crack vessels. We can use the basket on top here. Again, a really big trader wagon. Two baskets in the back. And this is the third trader wagon that looks exactly the same on the inside. <laughs> we have the hay bed and the basket inside. So some nice doobie storage and a cute little spot to have a little beginner hut nearby. Although I do like this type of really large Colosseum ruin to build in. And I'll show you that in a moment. Let's see about our reed situation. It looks like there are plenty of reeds to be had. We have sandstone. Now here's an example of stone that you cannot build tools out of. Now that flint we obviously can, but let's find another piece of sandstone. Now I, again I'm not finding a lot of sticks. Of course we're not in a forested area either, and I'm not easily finding a lot of flint. I do find the sandstone, but here's an example of a stone that you cannot build tools out of. Sandstone is a sedimentary rock. So if you try to shift click, it will give you the message, this type of stone is too soft to be used for napping, which you need to be able to build tools. So you won't have an extra supply of rocks here to build tools out of. And I'm not finding a lot of flint yet. And here is this nice, ruin that you could start to build a little starter house out of. Or you can build your starter hut next to the trader or a little dirt hut right over here and then work on this as your eventual move in. You know, anything. But you can always use these materials as well. And on these there's usually a vessel right at the front here. There it is. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say there's usually there's usually a vessel right near the front and there it is. So for this world, it's not too bad. There are trees over here. I think if I went in there, I would find sticks a little more plentifully. There is a ruin nearby, a trader nearby, a fairly flat plains area so I can get away from the forest to build so I'm not running into wolves all the time, a plentiful food supply, and I'm hoping an easier time of finding sticks and flint here in the forest. And yes, here is a piece of flint. I can hear a beehive nearby. There's another piece of flint. So it looks like there would be a lot of beating down of bushes in order to find a good supply of sticks. See, there's another ruin, also nice. to have more than one available nearby. Yep, I'm just not finding a lot of sticks, but that's not a game changer for the beginning of the world. As I said, you can beat leaves down, especially these branchy leaves here. It says oak branchy leaves. You beat that down and you will get a stick. So yeah, I think this world would work, although it would be a little bit harder because you don't have the availability of using your stone supply in order to make your tools. You're definitely reliant on finding enough flint. And as it stands right now, I only have enough flint to make three tools. Oh, wait, four, five. <laughs> oh, six. All right, let's try this one more time. Okay, now if you decide to use this seed, like this last one that had that large ruin, I have got the seed here. I'm going to create a new world with this world seed. This seed is 233707784. So you can write down the seed number. Remember we're copying our world settings. We can go back to the world creation, create new world, 
Now this is where we will go into Customize. We will control V, which will paste our world settings and we can type the world seed right in here. And then we click apply and create world. And this is going to create the world with the same seed that you entered. Okay, now we are starting in approximately the same spot. It looks like the same ruin, the same trader. Let's go take a quick look. See, this one was a seed vessel, and again, we're getting cabbage seeds. Okay, it's the same seed. It had the same vessel here, but I only got three reeds, and I believe I got more the last time. I think these mushrooms are in a different spot too. So there are some things that stay the same in between using the same seed. It seems that the structures are the same, but some of the world gen, like the crops and things, are a little bit different. So keep that in mind when you are using a seed that someone else has selected. So it looks like the ore generation may also be the same in between seeds. And although the vessel was the same, what I got out of it is definitely different. Another note about when you're creating seeds, when you spawn into a new world, it's okay to just escape out of your character appearance and class selection, because not only will you get it every time you spawn into the world until you select it, but you can also use the command dot C-H-A-R-S-E-L, that's short for character select, and then it will bring up this window. So you can then give yourself a makeover. So you don't have to do that every time you load into a new world seed until you find your perfect home. Okay, let's try this one more time. Single player. These have the customized world settings. We're going to click the pencil over by playstyle. We will copy the playstyle to the clipboard, go back and then create new world and click on the customize control v which will paste in all of our customizations and then click apply and create world all right let's escape out of there nice pink beard so very very quickly now it looks like we have a trader right nearby we have plentiful water so we should be able to find plenty of reeds lots of trees shale is also a stone that we can make tools out of remember to double check we shift click on the ground place one pebble and then shift click on top of there this type of stone is too soft to be used for napping what did i pick up i got oh shale okay yes it's, in fact you can hover over it and it will also tell you it's too soft for stone tools so yeah i don't know why i didn't think of that shale is definitely a too soft so there are berries nearby to eat. Here is our, this isn't just a trader. This is a trader caravan. Wow. Okay. We've got a barrel back here. There's only one slot and you really should not be putting anything in the barrel. <laughs> well, they're cooking some food. Wow. I wonder that is a cold fire pot that's cooking. Oh my goodness. I just stole a pot of cooked food from the trader caravan. <laughs> I don't think you're supposed to be able to do that. Ah, there he is. Okay, so we have another basket. There is a bigger chest. There is another bigger chest. Okay, so there's a little bit of storage. Okay, what else are we looking for? Easy source of food, not including the stew that I stole from them. As I said, I would have to make a bowl in order to eat it, so I'm not sure I could do that before it went bad. <laughs> but it's a pot that's already made, which is nice. Okay, so what do we have? Reeds. Do we have plenty of flint? There's some shells. There is flint here. Doesn't look like flint is too hard to access. It's looking for that little light gray 
stone in combination with the other stone that's usually populated by you know whatever the popular stone in the area is so they kind of blend in you have to be really careful so it looks like stone flint is easy to find that's nice a nice copper deposit right there and sticks are we looking for sticks i do not see a lot of sticks around however there are plenty of bushes there's some more flint plenty of bushes and things that just have to beat the leaves maple leaves see there's branchy leaves you beat the branchy leaves and you get sticks so basically the only thing I'm missing is a ruin oh and there's a nice kind of a plains area up here at least not too many trees so you can get out of the forested area some really interesting structures in this scene Okay, so here is that little trader caravan, and you can see there's some ruins there, a little bit of ruins here. There's another larger ruin here. So for a starter area, it's a little bit spread out, but this again would work slightly more challenging. There's another ruin. So yeah, actually this wouldn't be too bad of a selection, I believe, for a little bit more challenging beginner world. And that seed is 5508906252. So I hope this helps in selecting a brand new world in order to learn how to play vintage story and have a really good time doing it. This is Per Pianissimo, and until next time, play hard, die often, and leave a good looking corpse. Dude, but it, it looks so good and, and I don't know, it just just kind of let me pick it up here. Oh, I think he's mad that I took his dinner. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Here you go. <laughs> Friends? Okay. Sorry. I think it's a game bug. It's pretty funny. <laughs> it's just amazing. I don't know if that's, that's too high. I may recommend turning those down because that is an awful lot to be dealing with um, just during the normal course of gameplay. Another thing you want to look for in a beginning world is nearby... Ooh. Are you done?